You know, a lot of people ask us why another construction solution, and to us, it's actually quite simple. You know, over the years, customers have told us that they're looking for construction solutions that are easier to use, that are more affordable, that are more complete, and yet can be customized to their own specific requirements. 2020 is a solution that can be set up as a complete construction system. It can manage everything in your business, or you can only use the parts that you need. 2020 is a system that brings together all components of your business to help you more effectively manage your business and your projects through project management software, pre-construction, accounting and project costing software, as well as operational software, including human resources, time and expense tracking, and other operational type systems. All of that is being brought together into one solution, the 2020 Construction Cloud. So let's jump in and take a look at the software. Okay, when you first log in to the 2020 Construction Cloud, it brings you to our messaging screen or our messaging dashboard. You can simply click a button to automatically send emails and receive emails out of the system, which is like your Outlook or Gmail type interface. We also have a built-in calendaring system. So you can click here, you can easily select and create new appointments and new meetings and tasks, as well as over on this right-hand side here, you can see all of the shared calendars. One other aspect of the 2020 Construction Cloud is that it is built with a responsive design. And what that really means is that if you were to view this on an iPad or view it on an, another device with an internet connection, the interface is going to dynamically change so that it will automatically fit on whatever type of device you're viewing the system on. So wherever you have an internet connection, you'll be able to have full access to the 2020 Construction Cloud. One of the primary objectives of the 2020 Construction Cloud was to build a software that was super easy to use. And we've done that by integrating really easy to use forms and reports into the system. We'll take a look at one real quick here. If we were to jump and look at our projects and pick on this project dashboard, we call it. This is an example of one of the forms inside of 2020. If we click the edit button, you can see that it's really easy. Everything, there are tabs to organize information about this particular project. We have nice big buttons across the top that gives you quick access to all of the different aspects of your project. So looking here, we can see that this particular project has 29 RFIs, some submittals and some drawings and meeting minutes and daily logs and all of the activities that make up this particular project. Down below, we can also keep track of the project stakeholders and all the contacts that are associated with this project. Any important dates and drag and drop any attachments and we can keep all of those and preview them easily simply by clicking the button. So this is an example of one of the easy to use, easy to use forms inside of 2020. And we can look at some of the queries or the reports uh, by clicking on one of these buttons here. Let's look at this cost analysis report. And inside of these queries or inside of these reports, not only can we see all of the real-time information related to this particular project, but we have the ability to search for specific records inside of here. We can group it certain ways. For example, I want to group this by group so that I can see my project organized by division. You know, so by grouping it this way, we're getting a summarized level of this projects division. Here's our general requirements here and here's our revised contract amount with our original budget and all of the details that make this up. If we wanted to see the specifics of what made up the general requirements, we can open that up and we can see all the individual cost codes or analytic accounts that make them up and all the related details associated with them. We could just as easily come here and clear this and group it by project and that will summarize our whole project by all of the columns shown. If I were to select the group, then underneath the project, I'm gonna see again, a categorization of this project here. So there's a lot of great ways to group and to filter the information that you see on the screen so that you can come up with a report that makes sense for you and delivers the information that you want to see in the way that you wanna see it. Once you have this report set up, 
You simply need to come over here to the favorites and save your search. We'll call it Brant's report. I can use this one by default and I can also share it with other users. So I can go ahead and save this here. As well as being to add these reports and save them as our own personal favorites, we can also add them to our personal dashboard. So I'm gonna do that here. I'm gonna add this, give it whatever name I want, go ahead and hit add, and it's gonna add it to my dashboard. And we can view that by clicking on our personal dashboard link here. So you'll notice that now I can see that exact same report. I can see all of the details here. And again, I have full access to all of the details of that report right here from my dashboard. The beauty of that is, is now I can come in and add all kinds of different reports and widgets to this dashboard so that I have access to the information that I need most frequently. We can come into these dashboards here and change the la layout, you know, so if we want to see, you know, a two column layout or however we want this dashboard to view, we can actually have access and control over that. One problem that we typically hear from contractors is that they usually have up to five different systems that they're using to manage their projects and manage their businesses. You know, from an estimating application to project management and accounting and human resources. And then they usually have a ton of spreadsheets in there as well to kind of keep everything in order and keep everything on track. Because 2020 is a full construction solution, we can easily move information from estimating over to proposals to project management and into operations, including accounting and project costing, without having to duplicate any data in a nice, easy to use workflow process. Now let's quickly work through that process. Okay, let's start by going into our estimating application and we'll do that by clicking on the 2020 logo in the top left corner. We'll come over here to estimating. And once we're in the application, we can again see a list view of all of the estimates that we currently have in our system. We're gonna go ahead and create a new one and talk a little bit about what's on this, on this beginning screen here. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna give our estimate a, a name. So we'll call it Walmart Lot. And we can associate it with a project if that project exists or does not exist. I'm gonna go ahead and just associate it with one of these projects that already exists, just in the interest of time. We also have an integration with our sales and CRM system. So if you are tracking your opportunities and tracking your pipeline and sales uh, opportunities, we could associate this estimate to that opportunity. So I'm gonna come in here and I have one set up for Walmart lot. And we'll go ahead and select that. Then we can specify our project size. Let's say this is a 15,000 square foot project. And now let's talk about some of the other things that are on this form here. So first of all, we have our, our estimate items. This is where we're gonna put in all of the line items that are gonna make up our estimate. Down below, we have some add-ons and markups. So if we wanted to calculate a tax or a fee, or maybe we wanted to take all of the material items and mark them up by 10%. We can easily do that by coming in here, selecting one of our add-ons. Let's say we wanna mark up our materials by 10%. So we're gonna go through here and say, create that add-on and now it's ready to go. So the next tab we have up here is our scope of work. In our scope of work, we have a couple of options. You can cut and paste. You can just type in the specific scope of work or we do have the ability to predefine what those scopes are and then add them from the database. So you would simply select it and all of the details of that scope would populate into the system here. So that gives you the ability to quickly create scopes that are used over and over again and the ability to put in multiple scopes on a project. Once we have all of our items associated into this system, we can organize them into bid packages and we can use our bid management system to send invitations to bid, collect those, those quotes and the bids from the subcontractors, analyze them, and then or replace our estimate items with the bids from our subcontractors. We can also track subestimates. We can drag and drop attachments and files to this screen here. And then we have some settings to control this. But in the interest of time, let's quickly do a takeoff so that we can show you how to populate an estimate. And the easiest way to do that, I can either add an item or I could come in here and add an assembly. 
So in our system here, I'm gonna select an assembly. Let's see, we have asphalt patching. And when I do that, it's immediately gonna populate with all of the different items that make up that assembly. Some things to point out. You'll notice over here in our formula column, some of these items have formulas to be able to calculate what is required here. Based in those formulas, we have some variables and we have some inputs, we call them. So in order to make the calculations and determine the quantities and the amounts of this assembly, we need to answer some questions about this, about this job. So up here in the top, we have our inputs. Total square feet, we said was 15,000. <clears> the next question is, what is the depth of asphalt in inches? We'll say we're gonna do a six foot depth and then the depth of the base course in inches, we'll say five. Once we've filled in our variables here, we can go ahead and calculate totals and it will use the definition of this assembly and the formulas to calculate all of the different values that we need for this particular assembly. When we're done, we can simply hit add and it will take all of those items and it will add it into our estimate. So now quickly looking at this estimate, we can come through and we can see all of our total costs have been populated from that assembly. Some of our prices have not been calculated yet. So we can come in now and we can start adding in some, some markups. Let's say we want to put in a fee. So we'll come here, edit, and we're gonna add in uh, overhead in the amount of 10%. Select and calculate. So when we go through and do that, it is going to use these add-ons and markups in their order to make adjustments and calculations on all of the different items in our database. So we won't spend a ton of time on this, but I just wanna show that now that we are calculating all these items, up here in the top of this estimate, we can start to see some breakdowns. So here we can see all of our costs broken down by labor, material, subcontract, equipment, and other costs, what our estimated costs are, and what our proposal price to our customer is going to be. The next thing that we want to do is to generate a proposal. What we need to do now is click on the Schedule of Values button here, and it's gonna show us a listing of all of the different items that we have in our estimate here. You'll notice that it says undefined. That simply means because we have not defined any schedule of value for these particular items yet. So let's do that now. Let's select a couple here and let's assign them to a schedule of value. And again, it's gonna pull from our list. We'll just come in and say, this belongs to this schedule of value here. Now we have eight that we still have not assigned. So I'm gonna open them all and I'm going to select them and I'm gonna assign them to another schedule of value. Now looking at this, I can see here's the two schedule of values that are gonna show up on my proposal. And here's what the proposal price is for those individual items. Now really quickly, to create a proposal, all I need to do is come over here and hit the Convert to Proposal button. This is gonna automatically generate that proposal, that presentation of your estimate to your customer. And we can see the details here. Now we've created a proposal. There's a button right here that I can click and view my estimate if I need to refer back to it. But now if we want to print it, we simply need to come up and come into here and print our quotation or our order. That's gonna create a PDF version of this proposal that we can then send out to our customer. So here's a proposal. There are the two schedule of values that we put on there with their values. If we had put any scope of work, it would show up in here. And now you have a proposal that you can send out by email to your customers. So very, very quick. Once you've sent that proposal out to your customer and they have accepted that proposal, you simply need to and approve and validate it and set your proposal, which is now turned into a full contract, set it to fully execute it. And at that point in time, it's going to automatically create the project. We can see our project and our project dashboard in a couple of ways. The easiest way here is to simply click on the hyperlink in the form, and this will take us to that project. Now, based on what we, what we created in our proposal, it will automatically build out our budgets for this project. So if we click on the cost analysis report, we can see our two budget items that we created, and here's now our revised contract and our revised budget for each one of these items. 
So this allows us to start controlling our costs. We can create subcontracts and purchase orders very easily. We can create invoices and track them against those subcontracts and purchase orders. It's very easy to create a subcontract change order or even a prime contract change order right here within the system. And we'll have other videos that will go into more depth and talk about that in greater detail. So very quickly, we have gone over a high level overview of the interface. We've looked at some of the reporting features, the ease of use of the, of the forms to enter in the data, kind of walked through that estimating process, automatically sent out a proposal and automatically created the project. But 2020 can be much more than just a project management and accounting system. If you click on our logo up here at the top, it takes you to a menu that will show you a lot of things that are installed into this particular system. For example, sales and CRM, the ability to track all of your prospects and your opportunities and track them through a sales pipeline so that you can get to that stage where you're going to create an estimate or you're going to create a quote for them. We have a full purchasing system to be able to track your inventory and manage those warehouse locations and moves from one location to another if inventory is important in your business. Payroll and timesheets and human resource management. We can track your fleets and the equipment maintenance. You can see that 2020 can be a full solution to manage every aspect of your business. But again, you can only pick the parts that you need that maybe you want to use to complement your existing software. So hopefully this overview presentation has given you a good idea of what 2020 is, what it's capable of doing, and how easy it is to move from the beginning of your project all the way to completion. We look forward to having the opportunity to show you more of what 2020 can do and how it can benefit your company. Feel free to shoot us an email, give us a call. We'll be happy to set up a personal demonstration and answer all of your questions.